Hello. In this video, which is a continuation on a theme around document versioning, and document versions in SharePoint 2016 with the new document library in SharePoint 2016, we're going to take uh, as, mu as much a, a deeper look as possible at the new approval process, check in, check out, and version control. So, in the last couple of videos, we really looked in depth at some of the concepts. We looked at some of the user interfaces, we looked at some of the different views. So we looked at it from a, a view from a user, a, a view from an administrator, and then we looked at how people would be able to collaborate together inside one document library. And the assumption that's been made as we've gone along is that all of this information would be consumed, the documents would be consumed in this library format. Now, in some scenarios, that may be true. You may consume documents in a document library. And let me just define what I mean by consume. Use, read, edit, digest the information that is within those documents. It could be a case that you're producing HR policies. It could be a case that you're producing sales reports. It could be a whole variety of documents. And the documents that we're looking at aren't just Word, they could be Excel, they could be PowerPoint, they could just be just about anything, they could be images. It really doesn't matter what type of document, PDF, um, that people are consuming. So, although some of the concepts initially may seem a little strange, you need to understand that the end user, the person consuming this data, may not be in the document library, they may be consuming it from a different web part, they may be consuming it from a different portal. And when you understand that, you understand that the properties that we apply, so if a document's checked in or checked out, that is a property, if it's approved, if it's pending, those are properties. We can leverage those properties and say, if the document has these properties and they're equal to these statuses, then show it to this group or don't show it to that group or provide this group with certain functionality. So it all starts to come together. So we're looking at not just the creation and the management of versioning, but we're also looking at steps to authorize the content of that documentation uh, ready for consumption and then the publishing of that document into those channels to be consumed. So as I said this at the very beginning this is extremely complex and we're, we're looking at, at it almost at the most complex level now building on everything else that we've, we've looked at in the past videos. So I'm going to take you through right from the very beginning here of of where we are, so let's just take a very quick look at um, what our what our library settings look like, and we're everything that we've done so far has been in this version setting. So here we have everything switched on. The approval is switched on. The major and minor versions are switched on. Only people who can approve items and the author of items um, can see the draft version of a document, and um, the only things that we haven't got checked switched on is is that things need to be checked out um, before they can be edited um, and and this can it depends it's really a personal preference whether you want documents to be checked out or not and, and we'll talk a bit more about that shortly so with that all in place what we're going to do we're here we have two users we've got Jane who we're currently looking at who is a user and we're looking uh, we have Jeff who is an administrator and, and who is going to approve documents. So let's just very quickly create a new document because I want to show you right from the very beginning so that you're able to set this up yourselves. And we're just going to save that back now. And we've done this many times already in the past in, in previous videos. So what we get obviously is this document saved in here. The fact that it's already at two versions. The first version was when we initialized it. The second version, um, draft version, was when uh, we, we typed that text in. 
and we're just going to really quickly um, rename this document here okay so we're all named up and we're now at version 3 because we changed the name of the document so so what do we get out of this so let's say we were ready now to uh, push this document for approval so under the more tag we get this published version so if I check this published version um, let's just say publish version 3 click OK what we see here is this status move up to pending and obviously we get the checkout version here now if we just go and have a look at version history here you see that there's 0 0.1 0 0.2 and here is 0 0.3 and it tells us here that this one is uh, the approval status is pending so we've published this but we ha but it hasn't been approved and Jane Jane doesn't have the authority here if I, if I check this option she cannot approve this document this has to go up in whatever hierarchy set up in this scenario it has to go to Jeff and he has to approve this document so the current situation is it's in pending and in pending mode obviously it can only be consumed by people who have the ability to be able to consume it in pending mode which is draft and those people as we discussed when we looked at the document library settings are the author and people that can approve the document so let's go and see what Jeff sees so here we have Jeff's view and the approval status is pending version is 0.3 and if we check the ellipsis here and we just check out more what we see is we've got approve reject and we've got cancel approval so if we approve this and we click OK what we what we get is the document being up approved and we get the version moving up from 0 0.3 to 1 and if we take a look at the document history we'll see that changing up here and obviously 0 0.3 is missing because 0 0.3 becomes version 1 and, and because it's a whole number that becomes a major version and the rules around who can see this document ergo who can consume it change and therefore it becomes more public if that's possible uh, and available for more people and that may you may have a variety of other workflows attached to this you may have a variety of other portals and web parts where this document would then now become available or alert different people to say that it's now available and it needs them to read it to consume this document so that's what happens if everything goes well let's see what else we can do so let's go back to Jane and have a look at her view so here we are back in Jane's view and we're just going to make another change to this document And we're going to save that back and here we see that incremental version increase we flick it back to draft now version 1.0 is still available for consumption by everybody that has the ability to be able to see published documents what they can't see is the draft version only the people that have the approval status can see this. Now let's say in this scenario, Jane now says, I want to publish this document. And we click OK and we get this pending. And let's for a moment imagine that Jane forgets now that she has 
said that this document is ready for approval and she goes in here and makes a new change to this document and now she saves that so what happens in this scenario is the document moves forward in the version into version 1.2 and the approval status now switches back to draft so if we take a look here at the version history Jane said this document was ready to be approved and then she made another change to the document so this change has been sent for approval but this, this change is still in draft and Jane hasn't approved it. So let's go and see what happens uh, with Jeff's view. So here we are in Jeff's view. And what you see actually is, although it says it's been changed and the version has gone to 1.2, the approval status has been put back to draft. So if you had a workflow running here, um, Jeff was gonna get notified that this document has changed um, and needs approval. That's actually been removed because it's been overridden by Jane's next change to the draft view. Now as an administrator I can come in here and say okay I want to take a look and actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to force Jane's to publish and I can override that Let's say Jane rang me up and said, oh, I'm ever so sorry, I've made that mistake. Could you just approve it? I can just drop in here, go to more, and I can approve that. And we now approve that up. And now we move up to a published version. So hopefully that explains what happens if somebody accidentally pushes more than one change up but doesn't publish the second change. All Jane would need to do in that scenario was, would be to drop in and publish the second change or roll back the versions which we've seen in, in previous uh, videos. So let's go back and now have another look at Jane and let's see what happens if Jane now checks out this document. So we're gonna check out the document Now we're going to edit this document. And we've saved that back. So here the document's currently checked out and we're in draft mode, we'll move to 2.1. So let's have a look more. Jane has the option to check in the document, but notice what she can't now do. She has no ability now to approve that document or send it for publishing because it's checked out. So this is another layer uh, potentially for Jane to have in place for versioning. Now, obviously checked out means that nobody else is gonna be able to work with that document. So let's go and see in Jeff's view. So here we are in Jeff's view, and we see with this green icon that this document's checked out. We see that uh, it's checked out to Jane, and notice this, notice the version. Jane checked out the version, checked out the document, and the version has not updated. So if Jeff clicks on this document, he doesn't see the last change that Jane made. So this is about where the user can, or, or the author of the document can make the change without sharing that change with anyone else in that process. So 
if we go back here, I'm not even aware that this document has a new version. The only thing that's telling me that it's checked out is, is this icon here and the checkout uh, column here that, that I've implemented. Now, as an administrator, I have the ability to come in here, say more, and I can either discard the checkout, which would remove the whatever James made the changes to, or I can force the document to be checked back in. Now, if I do that as an administrator, and here I do not, I don't want it to continue to be checked out. I want it to continue to be checked in. So if I click OK, what that's going to do is that's going to force up. And notice the version now changes 2.1. I'm the administrator. And I've now forced, look, this, this, we now see the latest version of this document because I forced that in. Now, this is really effective if the person goes on holiday um, and they've checked out the document and other people need to edit that document or work with that document or, or the, the, the changes that are made are locked in that, that check-in status. Because remember, the whole point about that check-in, check-out status is to make sure that the changes that somebody makes are private and not public to anybody in the workflow until they check that document back in. So that's just another layer that you can add on top of the version control and the publishing to manage changes within documents at a very granular level. So in this video we saw how we could stop people seeing any changes that we made with the check-in check-out function. We saw how to override that check-in check-out. We saw how using the draft version and the approval process we could make changes to documents that would be then approved in a in a, and a, a, probably in a very agile workflow with the approval workflow rapid changes to documents that could push through organizations and then we saw how some of the administration power user controls come in to help smooth that process along making documents ready for consumption and also overriding and prob problem shooting some of the issues that users may have. So hopefully that has enlightened and also clarified some of the functionality. Clearly you need to use some of it to fully understand how it all works together. Hopefully I've been able to highlight how it works together. I haven't been able to highlight absolutely every single possible functional change that you can make but hopefully you can see how some of the bigger chunks of the SharePoint 2016 out of the box functionality works. If you like this video, please subscribe. There's lots more videos in my YouTube channel and there'll be further videos to follow. Thank you very much for watching.